Hello, I'm Kwesi, and here are three things that happened this week. So, there are three real things that I want to talk to you about um, that happened this week. The first one being the key issues facing landlords. This week, the NRLA held a webinar presenting the key findings of a recent survey on issues facing landlords. Some of them were things that is very, is, are going to be very familiar to a lot of people who are property investors. Um, confidence was one that stood out to me. And as many landlords would know, it's been a challenging 12 months, uh, especially if you're in the HMO space. And while actually landlord confidence has grown across the country in the last three months, landlords in London <laughs> remain the least confident. Partly because of tenant demand, and we've seen that since the first lockdown, city workers in particular have been moving out of urban centres into more rural areas, and this shows in the feedback. And so in London, the NRLA estimate that up to 700,000 tenants have left the city. Um, the survey backed this up with landlords in London being the most negative and actually net demand had fallen by roughly 32%. On the other hand, landlords in more rural areas like the southwest of England have seen tenant demand actually increase by almost 41%. The survey also showed that less than 10% of landlords have issued Section 21 notices. This probably defies popular belief from um, the public that this is some kind of no-fault eviction that landlords use regularly. And the NRLA webinar took place before the government announced the rent reform bill, which is the second point that happened this week. So this week, the government announced the rent reform bill. The bill will do a few things, including abolishing Section 21 that I mentioned earlier. Um, it will also aim to improve the court process for landlords and make it quicker and easier for them to get their property back from problem tenants. Whether this happens or not remains to be seen. So for now, at least watch this space. Now, have you heard of Satoshi Nakamoto? 10 years ago on the 26th of April, 2011, the inventor of Bitcoin disappeared, leaving behind his brand new cryptocurrency invention. His final words were a message on a message board where he said, I've moved on to other things. Now, as we've seen for the last 10 years, the world has moved on to Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has evolved from just an obscure esoteric project created by this mysterious Satoshi guy to something that is far, far grander, um, a trillion dollar financial industry, drawing the attention of governments and their regulation, financial institutions offering it to their clients, corporations looking at how they can leverage it for their own business and investors looking to profit. Bitcoin itself was created in, on the 3rd of January 2009 when Satoshi mined the, the Genesis block, as it was called, or block number zero, another name for it. But back then, the Bitcoin was $1. <laughs> Check the price now. Now, Satoshi identifies personally as being a 43-year-old male who lives in Japan. Although the clues that you find online don't really back this up. So he uses words like color with an OU and optimize with an S, not a Z which point to him being more of a Commonwealth origin. So, I don't know, Australia, New Zealand, the continent of Africa or other parts of Asia. But the trading friendly around crypto has reached fever pitch in 2021. But many have lost sight, though, of the true reasons why Satoshi Nakamoto invented Bitcoin in the first place. The tenants in his original 2008 white paper made clear that he didn't see it really is solving a technical problem. He really aimed to use it to solve a sociological problem, a systemic problem with the legacy of the financial system and sort of disaggregation of the control of fiat currency. Despite many journalists trying desperately to try to figure out who Satoshi is, he still remains quite aloof and nobody has been able to find him. What's interesting though is that his stash of 1 million Bitcoin, that's the volume of Bitcoin, hasn't moved. It's projected that that volume of Bitcoin right now is worth about $55 billion. Yeah. It also means that if or when Bitcoin reaches $182,000 a Bitcoin, 
Satoshi will become the richest person on the planet with a net worth of around 182 billion. Yeah. <laughs> so all I'm saying is that Satoshi, if you're around, and I mean, if you don't need these Bitcoin, if you don't want them, if, if they're meaningless to you, look, just just come come on over and let, let, let's have a conversation. Anyway, <laughs> I'll leave you with my final thought of the week, actually. And this is a quote, a quote that I read from Arnold Schwarzenegger of all people. And he said, money doesn't make you happy. I have 50 million and I'm just as happy as when I had 48 million. <laughs> yeah, Arnie's got jokes, serious jokes, but um, I like that one because I mean, I definitely feel better being having money than being broke. And I'm sure most people feel the same way, but there, there are limits to the happiness that money can bring you. Poverty brings you unhappiness though. I can guarantee you that much. So those are the three things that happened last week. Join me next time and we'll talk about three other things that are going to happen across this week. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.